Hi, this is Lauren Griffin, and the COVID-19 data we're going to analyze in the workshop today comes from usafacts.org. Now in this section of the workshop, we're going to see if we can get to know this data set a little better. We'll start by using the new data engineering tools in ArcGIS Pro 2.8, then we'll explore the data values in 3D by creating a space-time cube. The data is a CSV file, which we can bring into the project the usual way. We click the Add Data button and navigate to the CSV file on disk. Once the data is in the project, we right click on it in the Contents pane and choose to open the table. There are 1,146,830 records. And scrolling through the data, we see there's a record for each day between January 29, 2020 and January 26th, 2021. And for each day, we have a record for every county in the United States. The fields in the table include the county FIPS ID field. We have a timestamp, running totals of both confirmed COVID-19 cases and deaths, daily new cases and deaths, and rates represented by the number of cases and deaths per 100,000 people. And by the way, we're going to be providing you with a copy of these slides and Kevin is going to make sure that you get a project package with the data. So you'll be able to duplicate all the analyses I'm describing here. We've opened the table and we've looked at the fields. Next, we'll use the data engineering functionality to explore further. To open the data engineering panel, we right click on the table in the contents pane and this time we select data engineering. Now we could present really a whole workshop on data engineering and how you can use it to clean, transform, reclassify, reduce, pivot, and on and on. Here we just want to get to know our data a little better. We begin by selecting the fields we're most interested in from the left side of the panel and dragging them over to the right side of the panel. With fields in the right side panel, we can click the Calculate button to compute statistics for them. So this includes field type, the number of null values, the minimum and maximum values, mean, median, standard deviation, and on and on. And notice, by the way, that none of these fields have any null values. We know that because of the zeros in the number of nulls column. The statistics pane also includes a chart preview for each field. And this is also where we can create other charts. So let's do that next. Let's create a bar chart showing new COVID-19 cases over time. To do this, right click in the date time field chart preview, choose create chart, and then choose bar chart. This opens the chart properties pane. The category or date par parameter is automatically populated with the field that we right clicked on the date time field. And we'll set the aggregation parameter to sum to add up the values for all counties. Select the daily new confirmed cases as the numeric field we want to visualize. So for each day, the daily new cases for all counties are summed. Finally, we'll check on show moving average to draw a line with the average number of new cases at the top of the bar chart. On the Chart Properties pane, we can click on the Series tab to change the default colors, and we can click on the General tab to update the chart titles. And this is our final chart. It shows a gradual increase in COVID cases with a rise around Easter, another one at the end of the summer, and large increases moving into the holidays. Now, we aren't sure what the spike on December 21st is. Uh, perhaps it's due to additional testing right before the Christmas holidays. But notice that the number of new cases drops off as we move into January of 2021. Let's create one more chart from the data engineering panel. This time we'll create a calendar heat chart showing new COVID cases over time by state. With this chart, because we set the row category parameter to state, we can see which states were first to have significant numbers of new COVID-19 cases. New York has the darker orange colors earliest, followed by New Jersey, and we can see that Louisiana is also early. The darkest areas of the chart are associated with California and Texas. But these are sums of new cases, so states with larger populations are expected to be most prominent. 
If we use the confirmed cases per 100,000 field instead, we see more consistency across the states, and the highest rates are now associated with Texas. So we've used the new data engineering functionality to get to know our data better. But this data has both location and a daily timestamp, so we very much want to explore it in space and time. To do that, we'll create a space-time cube. There are two tools that allow us to create a space-time cube. You would use the first tool, Create Space-Time Cube by Aggregating Points, if you had point or incident data such as crimes, earthquakes, or traffic accidents, this tool counts the number of incidents that fall within each space-time bin, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. The second tool, Create Space-Time Cube from Defined Locations, summarizes attribute data for specific locations you're analyzing, specific locations where data is being collected. Now, since we have daily data recorded by county, we're going to use the Create Spacetime Cube from Defined Locations tool. Let's look a little more closely at the Spacetime Cube. It stores data in three dimensions, where X and Y represent space, counties in this case, and Z, the vertical axis, represents time. The most recent events are at the top of the cube, and the oldest events are at the bottom of the cube. The cube is made up of space-time bins. Each individual square in the cube is called a bin. In our case, each bin represents a particular county for a particular time period. Now when you create the cube, as you'll see, you determine the extent of the time period, if it's a week, if it's a month, or something else. Each column in the cube is a location, and for our data, each location corresponds to a particular county. Even though the data is stored as a nice, compact cube, each column, each location, actually represents a different county in this case. And the map here shows the columns distributed across uh, counties in California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. To create the cube, we need the COVID-19 data, our CSV file, but we're also going to need featured geometry, the counties. And we can quickly get that from ArcGIS Living Atlas. You can actually add the Living Atlas layer to the tool parameter directly, but to improve performance and to focus on the contiguous United States, I added the USA Counties layer to my project, I selected out the counties in the contiguous United States, and then I used copy features to create a local data layer that, I'll, that I called counties. The next parameter needed to create the space-time cube is the location for the cube, the cube file. Space-time cubes are net CDF files, so you'll save them to a file folder rather than to a file geodatabase. Both the county feature layer and the CSV data file have fields called county FIPS. The parameter called location ID is the field that uniquely identifies each county feature and the related location ID parameter is the field that links the CSV data to the county geometry. We'll set the related table parameter to our CSV file. Now, it isn't necessary to have the data and geometry stored separately like we've done here. Another option is to have the data and geometry in a single file with duplicate county features for each day or each time period. The advantage of storing the geometry and data separately and joining them using the related location ID field is data size, in that you don't have to store the duplicate geometries, you can store the geometry once. Now our data is recorded daily, but we don't have to analyze it daily. Often it makes sense to aggregate the data temporally to analyze a particular number of days, weeks, months, or years. And something to keep in mind, while we might be tempted to analyze by month, remember that each month has a different number of days, and this can affect how trends are interpreted. We might have more COVID cases in January than in February, for example, simply because January has more days than February. Using 30 days or 4 weeks is usually a better option than using months in order to ensure each time step has the same temporal extent. For our cube, we'll aggregate the data into 4 week timestamps. Ideally, each time step will also have the same range of data. If data collection begins somewhere in the middle of the first or last time period, and this graphic shows the data the green dots, 
begin in the middle of the first time period, well then there's going to be some bias. And when you create the cube, you'll get a report telling you how much bias there is for both the first and the last time periods. It's difficult though to remove the bias completely. You may need to actually change the time period range or remove some of the data in order to minimize the bias. By using end time for the time step alignment parameter, the data is binned from most recent to oldest, and any bias will be associated with the oldest data, which, which does follow best practices. Finally, we'll enter one or more attributes to analyze. In this case, we're selecting the daily new deaths per 100,000 people. The values will be summed within each four-week time period. And we're not going to show it here, but we could also add other fields by clicking the plus sign. Recall that when we were exploring the data earlier, we noticed there weren't any null or missing values, so it doesn't really matter what we select for how to fill empty bins. If we did have missing data, though, we could estimate it by averaging surrounding spatial or space-time neighbors, by entering zeros, by dropping the locations from the analysis, or by computing temporal trends. At this point, we're ready to run the tool. And when we do, the cube is created in less than a minute. And you'll notice that this tool doesn't add anything to the map. Instead, a report is created with statistics about the new cube. And you'll want to check the report to make sure everything is what you expected it to be. For the Messages tab in the report, you'll get information about the space-time extents and about any bias. Here, for example, the bias is very small for the first, the oldest time period, and it's zero for the last, the newest time period, so we're happy with the parameters we've used. The report also provides information about trends in the data. In this case, case deaths per 100,000 is increasing over time. The tool uses the Man Kendall statistic to assess these data trends. Okay, we have a space-time cube and a report with information about the cube. Next, we'll want to visualize the cube so we can explore the data in 3D. Visualizing the cube involves creating a new scene, running the Visualize Space-Time Cube in 3D tool, then navigating with your mouse around the scene and clicking to explore the cube data. First, add a new scene. On the Insert tab, depending on the scale of your analysis, you can either add a new local or a new global scene. Selecting local or global really just depends on whether you want the map to reflect the curvature of the Earth or not. Here, we'll create a new local scene. And I've changed the base map to light gray here, by the way, just so we'll be able to see the data better. Uh, next, with the Scene tab active, open the Visualize Space-Time Cube in 3D tool. Uh, provide the path to the cube, select the cube variable, provide the display theme, and the output feature class name. Here we're interested in looking at values for some deaths per 100,000 for each county for each four-week time period. The result of running the tool is a 3D scene which we can explore by zooming in, by panning, tilting the map, and clicking on bins to see the data details. Okay, so let's review what we've covered so far. Our goal was to get to know the COVID-19 data better. We started with the CSV file, examined the values in the table, Use the new data engineering functionality to explore summary statistics for several of the fields. Created charts showing the data across time. Then we obtained county geometry from ArcGIS Living Atlas so we could create a space-time cube, talking about cube properties all along the way. And finally, we created a 3D visualization to help us explore the county data values in space and time. Now, while exploring the data in 3D is interesting, it's kind of fun even, it's not a very good way to discern broad data patterns. Fortunately, once you have a space-time cube, there are a number of ways you can analyze the cube data. 